Hello, everybody. Welcome to Away Games, a Chicago Cubs and baseball podcast. Uh, I am Adam Amwala. I am one of the comedians who host this podcast. I don't think I even did the intro in the proper order, but who gives a shit? We're comedians. We love the Cubs. We host podcasts. You get it. You, if you're listening, come on. What are we doing here? Did you, you get here by accident? Go. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way you stumbled upon this. Uh, that's Kevin McCaffrey. He's he's uh, a multi-sport athlete today wearing a Colombian soccer jersey and a Cubs hat. That's true. My family is uh we we've we're a bit Colombian now. My uh, my brother Joe married a, a lovely Colombian woman. He did his uh, wedding in Medellin in uh, in Colombia and uh they starring Vinny Chase. Starring Chase it was wonderful. And we uh did uh you, you can get authentic uh, soccer jerseys for much cheaper down there. So I'm wearing this uh this Colombia jersey that my other brother got for us. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm fucking worldly today man uh yeah and follow us on uh, follow us at away games pod on twitter and instagram if you want to see how worldly we tweet and insta uh we actually did have some things on the instagram this week from attending the mets games that we did because uh the cubs came to our town they did they came to our town they they did not <laughs> grace us with the kind of baseball we've gotten used to in their last few visits here but you know that's gonna happen it was not as bad as that weird stretch in 2016 where they, they like only sucked for two weeks and that included their trip to new york right in the middle yeah that's that yeah. that was that that was a weird little dip that year uh it was like the dodgers that year that they won all those games the dodgers had like a they lost like 10 in a row in the middle of a season in which they won 110 games. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, there, there's, and I feel like this season across baseball, we've had several weird stretches like that. Like the A's have had a couple of super long winning streaks. The Diamondbacks, as we know, just did an incredible thing. They were setting records with how many road games they lost in a row. Uh, and they finally snapped their losing streak against our good friends, the Milwaukee Brewers. So that's pretty nice of them. <laughs> did you see the Vogelback play? No, I didn't. Our old friend, <laughs> our old it's large classic, adult son. It's just classic Diamondbacks incompetence. So I'm not sure who got the hit, but Vogelback is on second. Somebody drives a ball up the middle. Vogelback, like injures himself pretty badly i don't know if he like hurt his groin or what happened but like coming around third he like comes up hobbling so badly that he just starts walking towards the dugout assuming that there's no way he'll get home the fielders are so unaware of this that they're just kind of hanging out holding the ball the catcher and pitcher are screaming throw the ball home and vogelback like hops the last hundred feet home <laughs> he would have been out by a mile and nobody just threw the ball to the catcher well, I love that. Uh, I mean, that I don't love that. The, I, I love any weirdness. I don't love the Brewers scoring a run. Uh, as we speak today, the Brewers and Cubs are tied in first place mm -hmm. at the moment, too. Um, so that's I mean, nice. Uh, all, all due respect to Dan Vogelbach, him hopping on one leg is not appreciably different from him sprinting home. But. <laughs> right. The the <laughs> speed above replacement level, replacement <laughs> leg level, replacement groin level uh, is not is not the huge difference. But uh, yeah, I love any kind of weirdness in a play like that. And this, I mean, not, I guess not even for like on-field plays necessarily, but um, this week has been huge for just weird things on weird things to see in games because people be taking their pants off now mm -hmm. uh <laughs> on on the field scherzer and girardi got into a, a big shouting match last night uh the this the sticky stuff revolution has has made things pretty pretty crazy in the last week yeah what are your thoughts on this and not only on like b both on the sticky stuff situation and also like the particular way in which it's being enforced. I think my thoughts are pretty like baseball fan average on it, which of course puts it significantly above the level of competence and intelligence uh, than the way it's being treated from the people running the game. I, I think it, to me, seems like there needs to be some level of sticky substance allowed now why is that the case i don't really know it seems like there's <laughs> nothing natural in the sport that makes it so that you should need to have sticky things on your hand to throw a ball it feels right. like the ball should just be whatever it is but i guess i'm i guess i i'm going to be okay 
with the idea that like there should be a, a, a certain level of stickiness lab. There shouldn't be any notes going out telling people when they should and shouldn't wear sunscreen. Get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. That's right. a health risk in there. And- or we only allow up to a certain SPF. That's the... <laughs> SPF, yeah, 15, so you have to reapply after every inning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, I mean, that's that, that's that's funny, but that's also not uh, not really beyond the insanity of what they're they're saying uh, at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, like, spider tech shouldn't be in the game. That shit is crazy. I'd never seen it demonstrated what uh, spider tech actually yeah. is before this week. But And unrelated, definitely don't put Gorilla Glue in your hair. It has nothing to do with baseball, but just don't no. do it. This is a lesson uh, learned earlier in uh, 2021, I suppose. Um, Yeah, I mean, and just doing it in the middle of the season seems absolutely bonkers. It's not like the sticky stuff thing was new news. You know, we all knew Trevor Bowers last year was was what that was. And um, and even well before that. So doing it in the middle of the season is absolute garbage. And uh, they they just need to get on the same, you know, get on the same page with it. There should just be a substance that is allowed i think yeah i feel like that's a good middle ground yeah i i think i'm i'm kind of the same way as you like i don't i i anything in the middle of a season is always a little questionable and also like just disrupting a game like going out to like search someone i saw a fantastic tweet of uh Mike Bloomberg, I think, was at the Mets game last night, and someone tweeted, like, when Mike Bloomberg heard that they were stopping and frisking players, he just had to see it for himself. That is, there's a Twitter guy, we should maybe get him on the show, honestly, but his name's Richard Staff, and uh, he's genuinely funny, but he's funny in a way where he writes late night monologue jokes, basically, all day uh about baseball all the time and to the point where at first i was wondering is this a professional late night joke writer because yeah the structure is all there it's yeah like this is a thing that i've done professionally like i wrote monologue jokes for david letterman for a while and uh and i was once a contributor to snl's weekend update look at this so we but we know the we we know the 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 format of these things but the guy's young he so i don't think he has yet but he's going to get an actual writing job richard staff is a is a actual actually funny uh richard about to get staffed (laughs) richard is about to get staffed and god bless him good for him uh but yeah that was a that was a a perfect baseball baseball joke uh about yeah it's just like my my opinions on it are (laughs) while i think that it shouldn't just be a free-for-all like obviously in the same way that we don't want hitters like ingesting all sorts of crazy shit to make them hit long home runs or or using like i mean the pine tar thing is is ridiculous and obviously the whole like george brett thing was overturned because it Mm -hmm. doesn't have any make any difference but like i guess my point is that pitchers and batters should be held to some sort of standard we just need to like know what the standard is as do they Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of flies in the face of what baseball claims it's trying to do. It's like there's an addendum to the motto. It's like, let the let the kids play, but make sure their hands are clean. <laughs> and the checking, uh, and maybe this is just a thing, this cannot continue throughout the year like this because it was absolutely farcical uh, in, in the last couple days as this as this uh, was was enforced for the first time. But when umpires are checking pitchers as they leave the mound all the time, as they they checked, I think Scherzer got checked in the middle of the inning after he, mm-hmm. he was checked leaving the mound. I mean, this, <laughs> all they've talked about in recent years is pace of play stuff. This just slows the game down to an insane degree. So it's like, and right. guys are legit just about to drop pants on everybody. Scherzer started disrobing. He threw his hat on the ground. Sergio Romo was like, do you want these nuts actually? He, Sergio <laughs> Romo was absolutely pantsing himself. And uh, yeah, it's getting, it's getting to be sensual baseball, but I think not in the way, uh, not, a, not in the way you'd want. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a clown. But joke. I tell you what, you know the the automatic intentional walk has really sped things up. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, I mean, God bless the innovation uh, coming from the the head offices here. Uh, I will say that one of the uh, a, a sort of counter opinion that I also respect, and the only person I've heard say something like this, uh, Chris Bryant, our own beloved Chris Bryant, mm-hmm. w- was just basically. I mean, he didn't. He, I was gonna say he was like fuck yeah. He he doesn't swear, but uh, he 
he just he uh he just said after the game yesterday like yeah i'm all for it i i think for he's basically was saying that for a while hitters were being naive about it being like oh yeah of course you have you need sticky stuff so you don't hit us and uh he said you know whatever if you if you beam me that's on base percentage so i don't care you know <laughs> like get the sticky stuff out of their pitchers have had it for too long and i respect that too because like i said i mean with every pitcher saying they need to have something uh to be able to grip the ball that makes me feel like what is wrong with the balls <laughs> like there shouldn't inherently well, we keep changing them that's your yeah. answer right that is right? that is the answer it has to go back it like i don't know you need to make the baseball better i i don't i don't know what else to say there's there is nothing scientifically that makes a baseball something that should be ungrippable it that just in a basic sense doesn't make sense to me so i'm also on board with i like while while i think you should have something uh regulated to grip it when chris bryant's like fuck you <laughs> no <laughs> good luck out there i we, we should all you know i, I i'm not worried about yeah. pitchers having the best day i also think that's uh fair as well well, the inherent problem here is that I think everybody's kind of making a joke of it. And and I think it's probably the way that they've been told to enforce it, which is causing that in the sense that like, it's one of those things I'm trying to think of a good specific example, but like as someone who's like taught tennis or that sort of thing, there are times where like there are rules that are in place that even though you have to enforce them, like, you know, it's kind of dumb as you're doing it. And mm -hmm. the kids are like, why are we doing this? And I'm like, I also don't know, but I just know that I have to. Yes. Like that's kind of the vibe right now with umpires where they're like, yeah, this whole thing is crazy but like, this is what we're being told to do. So we're doing it. And I don't think that helps anything. I am looking forward to a situation in which the Cubs are inevitably getting blown out at some point. Rizzo comes into pitch and they search his glove. That would be very fun. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, after he strikes out Freddie Freeman, you got to check what sort of stuff he's got going on. If you're, if you're Kang Frederick, after oh, yeah. a four for four start, <laughs> yeah, you got some the, spider tech. I mean, we saw what that breaking ball was doing. That's unnatural. It's uh, it's it's of another world. I feel, yeah. I, I assume Rizzo already has a, a scripted set of beats that he will uh, he will take to the mound next time he pitches, uh, as well. Uh, and if it's late in the game, I mean, just use something crazy, get ejected as a bit. You know, just get it, throw <laughs> it. Bring the Purell back out. Yeah, <laughs> throw it so the ball doesn't even come out of your hand. You know. Um, yeah, so whatever. That's our that's the sticky stuff update. I think we've we've got that covered. Where do you want to? How do you think Gaylord? How do, how do you think Gaylord Perry would fare in today's game? Okay, I mean, he would be uh, tried at the Hague, I suppose. He would be <laughs> he would be sent to the international <laughs> uh, court of law. Yeah, he would be he he would be. Or I mean, I guess I, I guess I don't know the the level of pitcher cheating. Or is he the godfather of this in a way where he would just be like? right in the middle now you know how it's like guys who used to have a lot of power in like uh you know Harmon right. Killebrew back in the day yeah, would yeah, now yeah. be what maybe maybe he's just Edwin and Encarnacion now you know what I mean the game evolves right, so maybe true. cheating has evolved too that's a good point yeah uh let's talk Cubs stuff huh sure yeah let's do it uh, how was how was your well, Cubs week well we saw one win at least and when we they were saw, here yeah City. you you and I were at the same three games uh Tuesday Wednesday Thursday of last week the Cubs won one of those games uh they just did not score a lot um I think the most frustrating game out of that stretch was the DeGrom game which like seemed impossible then seemed possible and then seemed impossible again and now Robert Stock is a Met want to fill yep. us in <laughs> Yeah, so the the fill in on that Robert Stock is a guy who's the, you know he's I think thirty one years old now, and he had been being stretched out in Iowa. He was holding his velocity late, which his velocity was upper nineties, touching one hundred and one, and a slider in in the low nineties, uh, which is great. Not a lot of guys can do that, and a guy who can go multiple multiple innings like that uh, sounds valuable and interesting. The Cubs brought him up, put him on the 40-man roster, made him throw a career high in pitches when he clearly was not controlling the ball at all. Uh, afterwards, David Ross had maybe the most incompetent explanation of a move I've heard in his two-year tenure now where uh, he said you uh, he was asked why they kept in Robert Stock, which you tweeted from the Ad Away Games pod uh, account. Like, what are we doing? Are we just letting him throw a full, uh, a complete game here? This is, he clearly didn't have it. it he was giving up runs. We have yeah. a bullpen. Uh, and Ross said after the game, you know, we just have to get more length out of our starters. Robert Stock's not a starter. He started starting like within this month. So they brought him up, 
punted the game even after DeGrom was out, as you said, which made the game extremely winnable. DeGrom came out after the third. You should win that game. Uh, they punted it. Worse than that, they put Robert Stock's health at risk, and then they just cast him off. Then they DFA'd him after that. It's a real, and- like, wrestling sort of move. Very heel move. Yes, it's the corporation. It is, and Robert Stock is stone cold. You know, he said Robert Stock is someone being, he was mistreated, uh, put in a place that was bad for his health, uh, pushed in a way he had not been, his arm had not been conditioned to be pushed. And then they DFA'd him. And then the team that picked him up was the team that faced him. So they thought there was something there. You know what I mean? The yeah. Mets so, now have Robert Stock. So, and his uh, wife is threatening to leave him if he walks the leadoff hitter. I mean, it's really yes. tough. <laughs> it was. His, his wife was threatened. That was her pinned tweet. Uh, that, uh, you know, someone said Robert Stock looks like he's big divorced dad energy. And she was like, not divorced, but if he keeps walking the leadoff hitter, you know, maybe. <laughs> um, so that was just, that was like a bummer of a storyline in the week because it seems like they found something cool and Robert Stock and they were heading somewhere with him and then just shuffled him around in a way that uh, that exposed him to being picked up by someone else. So that's yeah. And I mean, obviously, the the game has changed a lot and he's in his 30s, which in baseball terms is old. But like, can you imagine even 10 years ago, anybody DFAing anyone who could throw one on one? Yeah, Uh, it's 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 hard to imagine and i mean throw throw one on one and a guy who's had success at the big league level relatively recently too he had a really good year relieving in boston um it just i i I didn't understand it it seems like it seemed like that was a cool weapon to have and the fact that he was getting stretched out a little bit even if he wasn't going to be stretched into a starter who you hope goes six or seven it there looked like there was the potential for really interesting opener type there or a guy who gives you two innings in the middle of of just fireballs uh so i i really i i think jed has done a really good job. Jed Hoyer has done a really good job with the margins of this team in a weird year with a lot of injuries, but that, that seemed incompetent to me uh, in terms of front office management and on field management too. David Ross, uh, that that's maybe my least favorite thing he's done in his, in his time here. Um, yeah. Well, we're, we're jumping around a little bit, but while, while we're talking about Ross, how did you feel about him pulling hobby? I was fine with it. I, I I think you you know you can't. I think you can't. You can't forget how many outs there are, and then when you see how many that you ran off first with one out, shrug your shoulders and not sprint back. Even though even if you're clearly not right. going to get there, I yeah. To wh- me, that was almost worse than the mistake was not mm-hmm. like realizing it and being like, oh fuck, let me run back. Yeah, I I completely I have absolutely as pissed as I was about how David Ross handled Robert Stock. I had absolutely no problem with him benching Javi in that situation. And uh, it was a week full of base running mistakes like that. Jack Peterson popped up a ball in play and walked back to the dugout when it was almost not caught. Uh, That's inexcusable. Anthony Rizzo is picked off. Rizzo, yeah, thrown off twice in the same game. Picked off twice. And the first time he just left early and didn't read it right. And I felt like that first pickoff, that's just part of the Rizzo. I mean, there's Rizzo steals a, a handful of bases every year and is pretty successful yeah. at it. This is just something, sometimes you're going to read it wrong. That's not bad. Getting picked off second was was uh, pretty in, inexcusable uh, after that. I don't know what was going on there. But it is a little different from what Javi did. It wasn't, it wasn't that level of mental mistake. Javi and Jock, I would put in a different category than, than mm-hmm. Rizzo's. Um, so I think like, you know, <clears throat> it also might have been a last straw thing if if Jock came after Javi making that mistake, maybe Jock gets pulled. But uh, Ross did a good job after the game saying like that guy, go, he's a leader, Javi plays hard, you know, and sets a great example 99.9% of the time. He'll be back out there tomorrow. He just, we just, you know needed to need to get someone else in there who was ready to play basically. And I I have no problem with that. That's a benchable offense to me. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. And I think, um, you can tell the guys are tired. I mean, they're, they're in the middle of a, of a long stretch here. And I was listening to a little bit of the compound yesterday and Hap was talking about the fact that like, not only the back-to-backs, but like the specific way in which they've been played, like, 
a Saturday and Sunday night game against the Cardinals to go right into four straight night games, including a getaway day night game against the Mets. And like, I, I don't think there's any world in which you should get blown out back to back days by the Marlins at home. Yeah. But you can understand how after a stretch like that, they're just kind of worn down. I still just feel like there's really not an excuse to not hustle. Like, no, I, <laughs> I, I, I play in a Monday softball league and I respect 90 or 70 or whatever, however <laughs> long the distance You respect is. the amount of feet that are between and, whatever yeah. bases there are. And I'm getting paid nothing and I, and you know, there's nothing at stake, but nevertheless, I just, that has not been a problem with this particular Cubs team. If anything, they've been like very good defensively and, and, and very good on the bases in a way that other teams have not honestly like the the thing with the Mets the and we talked about it last week with the you know Marisnik getting thrown out at home like that's not on him he's no. he sent home mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it's just I want to chalk up those two Marlins games to a team that's just tired and needs an off day mm -hmm. which they are mercifully getting today as we record this but um yeah, it's not. I, I really hate the Marlins. <laughs> I they're my least favorite team I hate in them baseball. So much. Yeah, absolutely. They should be contracted. What's the point? Who would even be sad? Uh, yeah, I I, I I aggressively dislike the Marlins. And uh, as as you tweeted, why do we keep making them look like the twenty seven Yankees? I mean, it goes back to the playoffs last year. It goes back a, a long way for whatever yeah. reason. Just as luck would have it, we play terrible against them. And yeah, I think the benching of Javi was. It was extremely called for. I don't think David Ross was looking for someone to make an example out of because you couldn't script something that dumb, kind right. of, you know? Yeah, it but, was more understandable than the Schwarber thing last year where he pulled him, like, in front of a national audience. For something that was, I think, yeah, more more benign. That was more like, yeah. there was more gray area to it. There's no gray area to not knowing how many outs there are. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean... I, 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 but I do think there is something useful in that maybe because as you said, yeah, the Cubs are tired. They're in a long stretch. A lot of teams are tired too. The Cubs have dealt with a lot of injuries. The league is dealing with uh, for modern times, a historic level of guys on the injured list, mm -hmm. you know, people, which we sort of foresaw coming off the weird COVID season coming off less conditioning and all this, all, all this stuff. Uh, but I do think there is a little bit of complacency that could have gotten baked into the Cubs here, where for we for a few weeks now, the narrative has been the Cubs are doing really well. The Cubs are might actually be a contender. They might be buying. They're doing better mm -hmm. than we expected. They're playing well against the good teams. They're in first place. So I do think there might have been a little let off the gas there where they're like, OK, maybe we're good. And there was some laziness on the field this week. Uh, and that that can't happen because you're not that good. You know, the Cubs, right. I, I do believe, and I think we we both believe, uh, this healthy Cubs team is and should be a division winner. You know, they're tied with the Brewers right now, but I, I, I think the Cubs, as constructed, mm -hmm. and if they had anything, are, are, are a little better than the Brewers. Uh, I... But you're not you're not a true talent 105 win team. You You know, you can't be mailing in tough weeks no this is an 80 to 90 win team and that and yeah. and the the difference there is those small things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis like mm -hmm. there is every reason to believe that a team will win this division with maybe 86 87 wins and if you've dropped a couple of games along the way because you just were complacent or because you didn't bring it that day mm -hmm. that's not to say that the brewers don't do that too every team has their moments but like these games will matter. I don't think anybody's running away with this division. I maybe I'll sit here at the end of the season and be wrong, but like it's hard for me to imagine a team winning this division by ten games. It just doesn't seem possible. Yeah, I mean, I uh, yeah, I mean, maybe the Cubs would if if they had a, a, a pitcher that was worth like six wins over replacement or and a better backup catcher. Like you know, I mean, like the, you gotta <laughs> let the Tyler Chatwood thing go, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I never will. He's doing pretty good in Toronto, actually. Uh, yeah, I can't. In Buffalo, it... you mean? Uh, yeah, that's true. Thank you. In Buffalo, that is more accurate. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't think it's a runaway division for anybody. I also think you, you know, you can't count on getting a wild card out of this division because of how good the West is. The West has just three teams who are winning everything, and then they have two teams that are losing everything. Yeah, the West like is a real, it's a real like 2015 NL Central situation over there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. When it was like three teams with 97 wins plus in, in the NL yeah. Central. I think you know, that's what we're looking at with the West. So they got the winner in both wild cards, you have to think, and the Cubs are going right. to, you know, have to win this division. Uh, one thing that's going to help with the winning the division uh, is the fact that Kyle Hendricks is back to being Kyle Hendricks. So we have two straight yeah. games of shutout ball now from, from Kyle. He's looked fantastic. And it was funny, they, they showed a stat on uh, Marquis yesterday that was like, Hendricks' stats not against the Braves. Like right. his two worst starts of the year are against Atlanta, which is actually interesting. If there's a situation in which the Cubs play the Braves in the playoffs, I wonder how much stock they would put into the fact that that's like the one team that gave him a lot of trouble. But uh, yeah, I mean, he he has been really for the past couple of months back to his usual self, which is great to see. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he's been he's been the ace that he has that he has been historically. He's been the ace. Uh, of this team and he's just been an ace in this league for the past couple of starts I mean shutting out shutting out the Mets was really important to stop that for what would have been a four game sweep you know and I I was sitting on the third baseline so uh, he looked good to me but when I watched the video after the game man that ball is it's got a lot of horizontal movement both directions now and that's really Mm -hmm. what what helps make Kyle as good as he is is when that ball is is darting in two ways you can't predict you know we he has the cut change he has the traditional fadeaway change uh and the two seamer that really darts the classically Maddox two seamer you know and and uh, the velocity has been good for him it's been like it's been 88 and touching 89 and that's that's all you need from Kyle uh so yeah that's been it's been really that's been as encouraging as anything uh, to see because you need an ace in this rotation when Jake Arietta has not been, I mean, has not been a competitive team starting pitcher level of performer in a month and a half, maybe. Yeah. I mean, frankly, he looks a lot like he's looked the past couple of years in Philly and, yeah. and initially it seemed like perhaps it was a Philly thing and, you know, maybe they weren't doing the right thing with him there uh, or the defense was shitty, but I mean, frankly, he just doesn't look like somebody who's <laughs> really like a major league level starter right no, now. No, he's, he's walking guys and leaving balls flat over the plate a lot. So, I mean, you've got that. Uh, one thing that hopefully will help is uh, Adbert Alzali is back. He had his first yeah. start back after a stint on the IL. And he sort of did what he did on his way up against against Cleveland where – he looked he looked really good and then he lost it at the end so his line ends yeah. up looking a bit messier when he was mostly good just lost at the end but i mean that's going to be the key for adbert is getting through that last inning you know is getting that one more inning of length at the level of production that the the first you know 80% of his start has been but once you have that I mean you have a guy who has shown himself this year to possibly be a, a two or three starter that you can you can dream on and hopefully Trevor Williams comes back right. soon too you know Justin Steele our friend uh, this is bullpen talk now but Steele has been throwing off a mound so that's great news yeah. um, and obviously the bullpen there's there's been no problems there to para Chafin and uh, and Kimbrell are just yeah I mean to para to para's uh, scoreless inning streak ended last night at over 20 innings, which is incredible for a reliever. Mm -hmm. Uh, And also, like, I give him a lot of credit for navigating the inning the way he did. I mean, runners on first and second, he's he's getting in a little bit of trouble. Like, bases loaded, nobody outs, and he gives up one run. Like, you're going to live with that. Absolutely. Um, He did some more things in St. Louis, right? Exactly. I was at that game, that Sunday night game, with bases loaded, nobody out, and he got out of it unscathed. Um, Chafin now currently has the longest uh, scoreless inning streak for the Cubs. It's like 16+. plus. Um, And yeah, Alzali, I mean... First of all, Adbert's tweet positivity above replacement <laughs> is just out of it, this world. It's all like the hands up and like a hands up and praying hands and like go get them and let's be better than we were yesterday. Hey, Cubs fans, I'm happy for you. Everybody, he, he's just a yeah. He's he seems like a a a, a bunch of sunshine in that uh, in that locker room. Yeah, but I, I think it's been it's been a big talking point, and hopefully, uh, it seems like Hoyer is aware of this, but like. We as fans and and he, he as a GM and Ross as a manager, like we can't all just expect that the bullpen's going to be this good all yeah. season, especially if the team keeps leaning on them as much as we have been. So like you do need, 
I don't know what who they're going to try to acquire. There's all these weird rumors about the Cubs trying to get Max Scherzer, which I think is absolutely not going to happen. Um, but like, you do need somebody else because if you have Hendricks as your clear number one, but then some weird combination of like Arietta, who's all over the place, Davies, who kind of is also all over the place in terms of right. what you get from him start to start. Like he has had good starts, but he's also gotten shelled. Yes, Williams is kind of the same, uh, and we'll see how he pitches coming back. Um, it's like thinking about if this team were to get to the playoffs, you don't have a playoff rotation right now. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with that. You have Kyle Hendricks and then a bunch of guys and then several guys that you're just just kind of hoping on. Right. I mean, I think it would be Alzali and Davies would be the the next two that you would probably go to. Um, you know, uh, you'd, you'd have Alzali go probably in the playoffs. Alzali is probably more of a four inning pitcher. I think, you know, right. and then that's which is be... fair because you can shorten games in the playoffs with off days, but you can. And I forget who it was, but I saw someone tweet that this is their hot take or unpopular opinion, but that the Cubs are this Cubs team is good enough to win the World Series because of the bullpen and because of the, uh, because they can hit home runs. It's sort of like a Kansas City Royals bullpen 2015, you know, when they had. Was it, what was it? It was uh, Wade Davis, Greg Holland, and Kelvin Herrera, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, the Cubs do have that level of of, uh, of bullpen. So, yeah, they can shorten games and sort of grind you out. Um, yeah, it, you know, I also don't think the Cubs are, are going to end up with Max Scherzer. People have talked about it because the Nationals have not played well, even though our friend Kyle Schwarber hits a home run every other at bat now. He hit five he hit and two one days. one that was like above his head. Yeah, there was one a couple weeks ago. That's like the highest pitch I've ever seen hit for a home run. <laughs> yeah, he's just on fire, and we know Kyle can get like that. And uh, you know, it's just you, you don't. If if I've been Jack's been fine. Jack hasn't been great, but I think he's been fine for the money. But you look at this team. It's like, what if they did nothing in the off season? What if they had John Lester instead of Arietta? If they just signed uh, Lester back. Uh, Schwarber and left you Darvish and Victor Caratini. I mean, <laughs> you would, you would like that team, right? Um, as far as How start has Lester been, by the way, he's been good. He's been, I mean, better than Arietta. I think his ERA is a touch yeah. under four right now. It was 3.6 last time I looked. Um, so he, he started kind of rough and then he had a run of, uh, of pretty good games, shut down the Mets too. Uh, I have I, I made a little list of starters that I think the Cubs could be targeting. Um, and obviously Scherzer, Scherzer, I think, is my favorite starting pitcher that isn't and hasn't been on the Cubs. Mm -hmm. He's great. He is an absolute lunatic on the mound. I love yeah. that. The the pacing, the circling the mound when he's really going hard, the yelling. The I mean, he was the Joe Girardi fight yesterday was wonderful. Girardi kept checking him, <laughs> and then Scherzer struck out the last guy, and then just I'm surprised he didn't trip into the dugout because he yeah. just like kept staring at Girardi the whole way off, and then like was flashing his hands up above the thing, and then Girardi was like, "Do you want to go?" The manager of the other team came out and was like, "Come on!" And it's like, "Come on, what?" What, Joe, what the are you gonna fight Max Scherzer, you fake tough guy? Um, <laughs> so also, I mean, look, Scherzer is expensive for half a year, but in terms of prospect capital, think of what the Cubs gave up you, Darvish, for three more years. This is just a half year of Scherzer, so you think of what they'd have to give up for him, and I really don't know how big the market is. I mean, so. I'll say that, that I think that's a move that they actually probably should make. Um, but here's a couple other names for you. Your boy, John Lester. I mean, it, it's not, it, it, that would be a guy if he's pitching like he is right now that you'd be like, all right, he's in the playoff rotation. It's not like a top two, but he's in the rotation, you know? <clears throat> uh, then there's uh, John Gray, who's a guy who in Colorado has really good stuff and he's been having a good year and uh he's only i mean short contract only on six million dollars that's not a big deal uh you say kikuchi over there in seattle i mean seattle's not going anywhere <clears throat> there there's a uh team option that he has uh after after this year 
um but i didn't know that was his first name the way the way you started saying that it sounded like a song from musical like you say kikuchi and i say kakachi you say tomato i say tomato. <laughs> that'll be kikuchi kakachi kikuchi kakachi <laughs> for players weekend he'll we'll do the uh talent show with uh you say kikuchi. you say i only say what i want <laughs> i only say kikuchi uh and kyle gibson is on 10 million this year 7 million next for the awful texas rangers um, who aren't going anywhere. So there's a couple names out there that are starting pitchers who could make a real difference, but we'll see what they do. Yeah, I like those names. Uh, I, somehow Lester feels unlikely. I don't even know why. I just feel like the Cubs don't want to admit that they were wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it, it sort of depends on, like, it either seems impossible or if they get him back, you would be like, well, of course, they, this was always going to happen, you know? Why don't they just get him back? They bring Lackey out of retirement. We see if uh, <laughs> we see if Jason Hamill's available. You know what? Let's, let's see what Ben Zobrist is up to. I hear he's had a weird oh, week. Oh man! Oh man! You know, I. Do you want to update us on the Zobrist? What you've? Yeah, said? man. I. <laughs> <laughs> reading about him makes me feel like i should have never complained about my own divorce because jesus christ <laughs> i mean um, you know you lost to wilson Contreras jesus christ, jersey literally, in, jesus, christ. <laughs> jesus christ is one of the main issues i did kevin yeah. kevin got a wilson Contreras jersey in my divorce in adam's divorce and i wore it to the game we didn't meet up <laughs> it was like i think it would be I bad that. i think it would be bad form to wear the jersey i got in your divorce uh, when we're both hanging out, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, thank you for the Jersey. It was great. No problem. No yeah. problem. Um, <laughs> anytime yeah, you want to get the... divorced and have it work out for me in a material sense is Perfect. fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so apparently Juliana Zobrist, who I have always disliked for the record, <laughs> you have not liking Juliana Zobrist. Absolutely. I mean, that cover of Betty and the Jets is so egregiously bad. Mm -hmm. And also, I always found there to be, I'm not a big, you know, judge people on their appearance sort of guy, but I always found there to be a, something a bit haunting and Ann Coulter-y about her appearance. <laughs> yeah, I think so. She's got... A bit ghoulish. The, yeah, there. also, you can see both rows of her teeth when she smiles, and if you're <laughs> someone like that, no offense, everyone is, is as God made you, but typically, I think when you can see both rows of someone's teeth when they smile, they crazy. That I just think that's a, that's a general rule. That's my astrology. Right. And you know who knows about being as God made you is a, is a very flawed pastor mm -hmm. who apparently was sleeping with Juliana Zobrist. And what makes it even worse is that he was also like counseling Ben Zobrist through his marital troubles as he was the person involved in ruining their marriage it's like on so many levels uh, just not that anyone cheating on anyone is okay but the idea that it is someone who is like specifically like professionally religious <laughs> oh and he's accepting money from ben zobrist at the time yeah he was making yeah. big amounts of money from ben mm -hmm. zobrist i think they, his own family this pastor got i, I believe it was fifteen thousand dollars just for like a personal trip or something from Ben Zobrist, from the Zobrists. And uh, yeah, and being paid while he and Juliana both had separate burner phones to keep their relationship going on the side while Juliana Zobrist is tweeting about, you know, Christ and family and all this stuff. And while this pastor is doing the same thing. And obviously so many people uh, working in or organized religion at this level are just working a grift that God happens to be a part of. If there wasn't a thing called God, they'd be doing something else that was, you know, that they're making right. fraudulent in a way to make their, uh, their money. But the level that this guy went to is absolutely, I mean, it's, it's Hall of Fame stuff. Yeah, and it's just like I neither you nor I know Ben Zobrist personally. Perhaps he is a flawed man as we all are, but like Yeah, he must he be. seems like a pretty lovely man. And it always seemed like he was like a very good dad and someone for whom like family came first, so much so that like he stepped away from the team, which is not something that you see professional athletes do very often because no. he said, you know, family comes first and unless they're and comes I, second I mean, baseman. I, I, you know, yeah, Ryan Sandberg I, also like basically retired due right. to divorce, but yeah. Right. Well, and I, and I honestly, like I, you know, we joke about it, but like that 2019 was when my life was kind of crumbling from underneath me. And like, I felt a certain like weird kinship with Zobers that year. Cause I was like, we don't know what's going on, but like as, as more news came out, 
I totally got it. Like anybody who's criticizing Zobrist for not playing during that time, it's like you, you don't know what it's like to experience that. And especially finding out what we have, like how the hell is he going to play baseball when that's happening? Well, and play baseball. And it's not, baseball's not like most jobs because it's the amount of time it makes you be away from home and away from your family. And while you're like, whether it's something he found or like suspicions he had, I'm sure he felt like he just couldn't be away from home, which if you feel like you can't be away from the person for a minute, that's probably mm-hmm. a good sign that uh, that's not the person for you. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's completely understandable. The guy forfeited $8 million from, yeah. uh, from that, which he's made plenty of money in his career. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not crying for him in that way, but that's still. He's actually the reason the Cubs have Craig Kimbrell. Yeah, because uh, yeah, <laughs> he got, so really, thank you, Juliana, for giving us uh, Craig Kimbrell. I mean, like, yeah, because the money freed up there is why the Cubs uh, yeah. ended up going after Craig Kimbrell. So, yeah, man, it's just like we it's sort of a thing where we all had suspicions. We all sort of had, I think, emotional guesses and reactions to that situation mm-hmm. off the bat. And as uh, I think it came out because of a lawsuit this week, right? Like Zobrist yeah. and Ben is. And uh, I feel uh, there's part of me that feels bad even talking about it or the fact that anyone's talking about it because it is like a deeply personal and, and painful thing. And it's like, it's one of those unfortunate situations of being someone who's in the public eye is that like, you don't really get that level of privacy that most people would want when they're going through something like that. So it just, it sucks. And it's like, it, <laughs> I, I don't, I really don't understand it. I, I like, I, I guess I understand the idea of someone like slipping up and making a mistake and being like, oh shit, like I, I really screwed up and trying to come back from that. But the idea that you have a family and you're doing this in such a calculated way, like it is an option to just tell your spouse that you're really unhappy and you don't want to be with them anymore. And then you handle it like adults are supposed to well yeah and i mean i what why i don't feel <clears throat> as bad talking about it is this is a thing where the guy the guy who was directly involved with what we follow and what we talk about in this podcast uh ben is the aggrieved party here and i'm sure he doesn't love people talking about it sure but i mean the I think the level of sociopathy displayed by Ju- Juliana Zobrist, and I'm sure she'll have some inspirational Instagram post and a 4,000 word caption underneath it saying how she's somehow the hero of this story. I mean, I think this is just, it, as we fill in these details, uh, it shows us A, that our weird emotional guess off the bat was like exactly correct. Uh, and B, like it's it's sort of coloring in what the guy we rooted for was dealing with this whole time, which is just an insane thing that most i mean this is this is exceptional for humans of any kind to have to deal with like this is beyond baseball this is i mean this is one of the worst divorces i've ever heard of i'm i'm a child of divorce you know like and that it was not it it was not this my neither i mean i guess in this case my dad was not juliana zobris thank god Uh, did you get more uh from your parents divorce or from mine (laughs) You know, Adam, it could be you. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if my dad's bought me a jersey, but uh, yes, yeah, so it might be yours. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I it's it's obviously like it, it's it's an insane story, and uh, I, I don't think we'll be talking about it much more beyond this week. But uh, Ben, sorry to Ben Zobrist, one of the. I mean, an all-time Cub, our World Series MVP. And as you said, by every account, just a terrific guy, you know. Yeah, I mean, it goes without saying that the Cubs don't win the World Series without him. And you think about that run, obviously everyone thinks of the hit in Game 7, but like you think about that hit against the Giants in Game 4 of that series, that's as big of a moment as any other moment in that playoff run, that ball down the line off. Uh, was it Sergio Romo or was he out by that time? <laughs> Ooh, it might have been. Yeah, Romo or Hunter Strickland or uh, yeah, yeah. I can't. I, I, Who knows? There. I mean, the Giants used every pitcher they had that inning. Yeah, so. Derek Law was in there. Yeah, there was there was a lot going on. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, like he was such a crucial piece to those teams. Uh, you know, uh, obviously on the field, and he seemed like such a well respected guy off it too. And and uh, I hope that he doesn't actually have to sell his World Series ring. It sounds like that was like not true. 
It seems like that was fake. Yeah, that because he there was a big thing online about like, oh, Ben Zobrist's World Series ring is going up for auction. Does he need money that bad? And I think I was saying like, look, he doesn't need money that bad. If he does, that's nobody's that's nobody else's fault. He's made like, you know, right. well over 50 million dollars in his career. Uh, I think like over 70. But uh, he then posted a photo where he was smiling, looking good. And he was sort of like holding up the ring, like still got it, you know, so hopefully he was pointing it in the air like henry rowan gartner at the end of uh (laughs) at the end of rookie of the year yeah he i mean hopefully he's it seems like maybe he's doing better now and hopefully he's in a better place and moving forward and uh yeah you know hopefully we see him around the ballpark again soon and never hear that god-awful music uh from juliana zobrist again that song or any other really you know i was at so ken schultz and i were at that's actually the last cubs game that i was at was september of 19 uh against the mariners it was zobrist return Mm -hmm. Contreras hit a bomb but when zobrist came up i was so excited to not hear that song and then it played and i was like i guess they're working it out fuck (laughs) yeah oh man and in hindsight how depressing that is him still going with the song but man whatever but by the way i yeah sorry go ahead how do you separate the art from the artist when it comes to juliana zobrist you know you know it's so hard because i I, yeah i'm such a huge fan of her work Mm -hmm. that it's going to be hard to like enjoy it in the same way that i have all all this time like i Mm. i don't know if you know this i actually have a a premium spotify account and the only thing i have downloaded is juliana so (laughs) yeah you got the year i don't listen to podcasts i don't listen to music yeah year end wrap-up is just juliana so like I I remember they did one of those things that was like they put up on this the big board of like who's your favorite artist and it's like you know Rizzo's like Taylor Swift and Javi is like Jay Balvin and and Ben is like my wife and it's like is she though I mean <laughs> I I was married I'm in a relationship now I would I would be resentful if my person was like Adam Mama Wall is my favorite comedian. I'm not. Come on. <laughs> yeah, don't I, patronize me. I think I'm funny, me. but this is ridiculous. Right. Uh, I'm looking at Juliana Zobra's Spotify right now, and one of her top five most played songs is a song called Only You. Well, not only you, I think, uh, when it comes to Jeez. Juliana. It turns out not, <clears throat> not only you, maybe. Uh, <laughs> only, only you, dot, dot, dot. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. Oh my God. Anyway, that's the uh, that's the Zobrist update. I think. Wow. Oh, I was just gonna say one thing about Rookie of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're you're a bigger Rookie of the Year guy than I am, but you're you're the Rookie so, of the Year expert. He he breaks his arm. He becomes an elite pitcher, right? Then he re breaks his arm, unbecomes a an amazing pitcher. Yeah. They still beat the Mets. But then that's all we see. And at the end of the movie, he's holding up a World Series ring. Did they get to the World Series and beat the AL team without Henry Rowan Gardner and Chet Stedman? Yeah, you you have to think that Rowan Gardner wasn't straight up floating it all the way no. through the playoffs. That's yeah. that's a trick pitch. It worked once, but you can't if he's not bringing heat. He's not he can't make your NLCS roster or World Series roster, whatever it is. Yeah, I just I, I want to know who is starting those games. I mean, I, I don't know. It's always weird when a when a sports movie ends before the championship, you know? Yeah, like they like, could have just made it the World Series. I know they had set up the whole rivalry with Hado from the Mets grinding right. the bat, all that whole business. Yeah, and my my favorite baseball movie, Major League, similarly ends after a one game playoff for the AL East is the is the climax, and uh, and then they they talk about what happened in, in the sequel. I don't I don't recognize the sequels. Um, <laughs> so the Indi- the the Indians went ahead and won the World Series. Uh, that's canon for me. In the that's how I feel about Jurassic one. Park. There was one Jurassic Park, nothing else. Uh, yeah, followed. the dinosaurs did not lose at the end. They didn't uh, go to San Diego. And yeah. who wrote the second movie? What are we doing? <laughs> it is. It is a real like de-escalation. You're like on Dinosaur Island, which is crazy. And it sounds insane. And scientists have worked together to make this thing happen. Then they're like, now they're just on the 405. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're in traffic on our way to La Jolla. And then we're going to see some dinos. Uh, oh, yeah, boy. it's a de-escalation. So um, what, what else we got before we wrap this thing up here? Uh, uh, I don't think a whole lot. We did this is a long this is a long pod here. This was fun. Um, we got let's let's do a quick look ahead. So we've got an off day today. We're recording this on Wednesday the twenty third. Now this is where it gets tough. We got some spice coming up. We got a four game set at the Dodgers, and then three games at Milwaukee, three at Cincinnati. So like this is not this is not an easy stretch. You would have loved to bank some more wins, at least against the Marlins, if nothing else. Like 
you know, it, splitting against the Indians, it's fine. It's fine. And, and losing losing three or four to the Mets, not ideal, but it's a tired team. The Mets are also, they have the best home record in baseball. I didn't know that. But we They've also been very good. We also yeah. won the season series against the Mets, even though they had one more home game. So, I mean, that right. uh, when you look at the schedule at the beginning of the, year, of the year, that you're taking that, you know. So, yeah, they have floated through this fine. But it's still they're still in the really tough stretch. And the upside is like it has to get easier, you know, once we get into yeah. July and August. Um, and if possibly if they add a little talent and guys get healthy, maybe the Cubs can really go on a real run once the schedule right. softens up. But and it sounds yeah, it sounds like Steele is, is coming back soon. Uh, Williams as well, pitching wise. And then it looked like Bodie was taking some or he I don't know if he was taking batting practice, but he was on the field yesterday. Nico, I think, is is kind of in that same category obviously they won't be available for the Dodgers series but I think within the next couple of weeks we should hopefully be seeing them and I mean you're not often rooting for like barely 500 but like you look at that Giants and Padres stretch and the Cubs were three and four like you can live with that and I absolutely think when you go yeah. four at the Dodgers three at Milwaukee perfect world you split with the Dodgers and take two of three against the Brewers which never seems to happen at Miller or AmFam or whatever the fuck they're calling it <laughs> yeah uh, <something. laughs> yeah I still <laughs> it's sort of like the Willis Tower Sears Tower thing yeah, like I'm just ridiculous. not it's what it is it's what it was uh, I'm, not, um, I'm not changing but I mean four and three three and four you can live with anything less than that is not great and, and also like I would rather you know go one and three against the Dodgers and sweep the Brewers a hundred percent. The the games with the Brewers are worth two. I mean, that's just right. how you have to think of it. Um, so yeah, I I, I would a hundred percent take that deal, and th that is going that's going to be the biggest series this month. I think mm -hmm. is that that series. That's where some movement can happen in this division that actually really counts, and every game counts. Yada yada. But uh, as we say, a, a win for you is a loss for the Brewers, and vice versa. Uh, uh, when you're when you're head to head and uh that's that's going to be huge so right yeah and i mean we have we're coming up on the all-star break here and all of these series are pretty important uh especially after the dodgers one we have three of the final four series are against the other teams in the division who are competing we've got uh three against the brewers three uh at cincinnati and then there's a, a philly series um at wrigley and then we end out uh against the cardinals at wrigley before the all-star break so a lot of important baseball to be played here. You, I would say you hope to kind of tread water and stay in first or near first in a winnable division. And then let's add some pieces sooner than mm -hmm. later, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. And we adding some pieces internally too, obviously with, uh, with, if you get Bodie Duffy and Horner back at some point, those mm -hmm. are, you know, at that point, you're probably seeing them replace what you're seeing probably Rafael Ortega goes back down. You, I'd love to see Alcantara stay. Yeah, I think I think Alcantara has to stay. We I haven't gotten clarity on his option issue. It seemed like he was not. It seemed like if he was called up, he had to be put on waivers to go back down. But it might be like it might be like Alzali, where because of the weird season, there's one more option year. I'm not a hundred percent clear on that. But you cannot offer Sergio to waivers while you have Eric Sogard on the team. And I'm not trying yeah. to be a pile on Eric Sogard guy, but honestly, if you have to <laughs> when these real major leaguers come back, he has to be the one to go. Like there yeah. they, you cannot if Duffy and Horner are back, okay, that means Ortega goes down and uh and Sogard I really don't see a better option Patrick Wisdom can't go anywhere he Wisdom has to be up on this team he just hit yeah. his 10th homer he's yeah. hammering the ball it seems like the Cubs might have really found something there Alcantara is genuine depth at shortstop and all around the infield with plus defense honestly and again not to be a Sogard hater but we have D Strange Gordon at AAA who is a bad hitter but he's a bad hitter in a similar way that Sogard is. He makes a ton of contact, and he's faster, and he's better defensively. So I don't know what we're doing not calling him up. I mean, when the only difference, if you're saying the only thing Sogard could theoretically do better is offense, and he's the worst offensive second baseman in the league. Um, so Sogard should be gone already. No offense, Sogard. Thanks for the contributions. But... Um, yeah, let's get the let's get the team a little healthy, and we can uh, we can see some 
some some positive movements in this uh, in this division, maybe. And while we're talking about the All Star break, go vote for Chris Bryant at least. Vote for Wilson Contreras too. Contreras probably doesn't deserve to start the game this year, right. but let's get it. Let's do what we can to get him there. He deserves to. Yeah, be and you there. can't you can't vote for pitchers. I don't believe, but I mean, Dirty Craig should definitely be an All Star, and I think Hendricks has made a good case for himself too. Hendricks will probably need just because of how rough that was. If you go traditional, he leads. He's the first in the NL to ten wins, which is fun. Uh, maybe yeah. we can get Hendricks's first twenty-one year. That would be that would be great. And he certainly yeah. deserves to make an All-Star team at some point here. So, uh, yeah, there's there, there's some some fun to look for towards the All-Star game, Cubs wise. Uh, but I think that's it, right? Do we have anything else, Adam? I I don't think so, unless you got anything to plug. Ah, uh, no, let's plug at Away Games Pod on Twitter, on Instagram. Follow us there. We're active there during uh, during all the games and during the week. And uh, if you haven't, rate and review us if you don't mind. See all you right. next week. Bye.